When I live in Pennsylvania, cities are close to each other. Like you can be in the next city in just five minutes and pass through five cities in just 30 minutes of driving. So in a dialysis center, patients can be coming from as far as two to three cities away, which makes most of them full. More patients, more workload, so staff are getting more worked up and stressed, leaving to faster staff turnover. A few clinics were even closed because there were no more nurses left to work and to keep them open. My original facility, for example, was closed even before I arrived here in the U.S. I never got the chance to step foot in that clinic. Up to the day I transferred to a, another clinic in a different state a year after. While in this city, I now currently work in Nevada. Clinics close because they are running out of patients. Most have no TTS schedules. My clinic, for example, only has one shift. So nurses leave here for a whole different reason. They have less hours. <laughs> Nurse Germs here. I'm a Filipino dialysis nurse here in the US and welcome back to my channel where I upload videos all about dialysis and my journey as an immigrant nurse here in the US. Now you can understand why I've always longed for the day that I won't be dealing anymore of major major staffing problems and over workload. And now I've truly experienced the saying be careful what you wish for because now I'm in Nevada I can truly see the difference of pacing, staffing, workload, routine, organization, and more. Do I want to take back what I wish for or embrace fully what I'm now currently in? So if you're ready, hit that like icon, smash the subscribe button, and hit that bell icon for a new video every week as I take you with me discovering a nursing career. To guide you throughout this video, I'm going to put some timestamps below that redirects you straight to the topic that you are looking for. But before anything else, just a disclaimer, everything in this video is based on my own experience and not intended and will not be understood or construed as professional advice. <laughs> Nevada is about 2.5 times bigger than Pennsylvania in size. However, PA is more populated with about 12,972,000 people living within the area, while Nevada has a total population of 3,177,700 this was from last year, 2022. Just by that, it totally makes sense as to why the two have different situations. Hmm. How about creating a point system and adding a point to which I find advantageous? Ready? Let's talk about dialysis clinics. Let's narrow that down to the company where I'm working. They have a total of around 112 clinics in Pennsylvania, while there are only 35 in Nevada. I repeat, I'll be only talking about one company here. In my city in Pennsylvania, specifically, they only have one. While in my current city in Nevada, they have three. Because the area where I live in PA consists of cities that are very close to each other. So obviously, one clinic covering three cities might be enough. While in Nevada, since the area is bigger, one clinic in a city might not be practical because the clinics here are 20 minutes apart from each other. Pretty justifiable, huh? Now, this is where the problems arise. Because there's only one clinic within a three-city radius, there will be lots of patients fighting for that one vacant slot. And the result is 
clinics accept more than they should be. As for the three clinics in a city, patients are widely divided, which means not all will be in full patient capacity. One clinic right at the center of the city is obviously running in full capacity. The second clinic just recently closed the TTS days, transferring their patient to ours, which in our case is still not even enough for us to run in full capacity. Our TTS schedule, by the way, has only one shift, sadly. Well, you heard my last word, 1.4 PA. <laughs> Need I explain this? Back in PA, I floated in two clinics. One is a 24-chair facility, while the second one is an 18-chair clinic. The 24-chair clinic is always run by two nurses, so the ratio is 1 is to 12. While the 18-chair clinic, according to them, can be managed by one nurse only. The situation is, in TTS days, the clinic is purely run by one nurse only. While in MWF, one nurse will open and be joined by another nurse who will close the shift. So basically, it's still a 1 is to 18 ratio. But there's more. Don't be deceived by the 1 is to 12 ratio because apart from that, I also got to have my own pod consisting of 4 patients. So I string machines, stick my 4 patients, assess and give medications, and continue to the other 8 patients and so does the second nurse. The 1 is to 18 ratio on the other end is worse because I was the only nurse plus I still got to have my two patient pod. So because short staffing is something that I cannot avoid anywhere in the US, I'd rather experience that when I'm close to my family. Because no matter how stressed you are, if you have the emotional and mental support you need, everything will just be manageable. Thus, I transferred to a different state. And you know what? Here in Envy, I got culture shocked. My main role here is purely a nurse doing assessment, medication, paperwork, etc. Like you don't want to mess the machines and the access of the patients because they are the PCT's territory. What I meant is I'd rather we stay in my lane rather than making them work more because if I mess up the patient's access, it's still them who's going to continue the job. So I'd rather keep it that way. But I'm readily available to help if there is a need, especially during turnover. So the ratio is definitely the same since my clinic consists of 24 chairs also. So it's still a 1 is to 12. The only difference is we don't have our own pod anymore where we string our own machines and stick our own patients. Now the point obviously goes to envy. It's a time. In PA, all clinics are in full capacity. MWF runs three shifts. TTS has two shifts. I work four days a week, averagely 12 to 13 hours each day. In the 24 chair clinic, the two nurses both open and the closing nurse will be the only one closing the shift. While in the 18 chair clinic, as previously mentioned, one nurse opens and another closes. So the closer nurse of the bigger clinic can reach up to 16 hours while the other clinic, the nurse is only up to 10 hours. On average, I can reach more than 100 hours in a two weeks payroll period in the big clinic, which I average at around 80 plus hours in the smaller clinic. So when I was transferred to the bigger clinic during my roughly last three months in PA, it was quite manageable given the fact that I earned more. Now in Nevada, hmm, how do I start this? 
I work three days a week, 11 to 12 hours for two days, and six hours for one day. Does that even reach 40 hours a week? I wish, and I've actually tried getting only 27 hours in a week with 56 hours for two weeks payroll. Ouch. This is just half from what I was getting from PA. So, you know where the point is going. To PA! There are a lot of considerations when it comes to pay rate and I won't go into detail. And because cost of living still differs between cities in the state, I'll base this from the gas prices. So, from where I live in PA, gas prices range from around $3.1 to $3.9, while the city that I now live in, Nevada, it ranges from $4.2 to $5. Obviously, Nevada can be considered as more expensive. So, when I had the interview, my hourly rate was increased. But, there's more. Nevada has no state tax, so I get more from my pay compared to PA. But, 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 because I got less hours here, I still can fully enjoy my newly increased rate in the no state tax. So, in the end, my pay in PA is still higher only because of overtime hours. So, I'm quite torn here but I'll give the point to PA since I've never really had a paycheck to paycheck experience there I still got a little extra this is based on our situation now but FYI we just transferred two months ago we spent almost all of our savings, so we're back to starting zero it might be too early to say but let's see in a few months Oh no, PA is leading with two more points. You know where I'll be going here. Let's talk about the facility administrator. In PA, both of the clinics I flow to are managed by a non-clinical manager. Slash, not a nurse. In fact, the FA actually manages three clinics. Two to where I float in the clinic that I'm supposed to be assigned that was closed. So the short staffing does not only happen within the floor teammates but also in the administration because my previous FA ran three clinics. The manager already has a full plate making it difficult to properly find solutions to the problems. Plus, with no clinical background, it's even harder to empathize with what teammates actually need. There's no clinical coordinator in both clinics too, so all the workload goes to the nurses. In Nevada, well, 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 the FA is a nurse, and I'm not yet done. The AA, on the other hand, is a PCT. So you already know when sudden call-ins happen, they're there to save the day. Currently, there is no clinical coordinator, but the position is open for hire, just in the process of having applicants. So when it comes to delegation of tasks, you know that everything will be manageable because it's coming from a nurse's mind. So with that, one point goes to NB. <laughs> And my most favorite part, schedule. Oh, how I remember the excitement when that one piece of paper is finally released showing us the days that are short stop. Are you excited? It was always in the TTS schedule, by the way, though. We are always short of one PCT. That leaves us two nurses three PCTs in a 24 chair clinic. So we are then assigned with five patients each and more. 
when most of the time you rarely see nurses taking a vacation while most PCTs seem to be competing for PTOs. Of course, nurses can also apply for PTO. But knowing how the situation will look after you leave, how can you actually fully enjoy it? Plus, PCTs can suddenly call in because they have us, the nurses, who can also do their job and cover for them. Compared to nurses, it has to be something big or yet make a scene and fight for it till you can actually call in. Because without the nurse, I don't think the PCT can actually cover for us. I have nothing against PCTs. This just shows how big the role of the nurse in a dialysis clinic because it can't open without a nurse. On the other hand, in my new clinic, we do self-scheduling. Two weeks before the new schedule is released, we are given the blank schedule to plot whatever days we want to work on a schedule ahead. Of course, there are also rules to follow like at least two Saturdays in a month, three to four minimum days in a week, and we need not use our PTO to clear a particular day and just post it as NA, meaning we're not available. Amazing, right? And we are fully staffed. There are a total of three nurses in my clinic. We only work three days a week, so when one is on a vacation, we can just work four days a week. We need more hours anyway. Furthermore, if the remaining nurses have some important appointments too, then there are the acute nurses who are on standby who can also cover. How perfect is that? Plus, they are mostly Filipinos. And you know what we're branded for here? We love working extra hours. Envy deserves this point, definitely. So, how's the scores going? Mm, it's a tie, with both states having three points. But, there's gotta be a determining factor somewhere, and it's... Mental health and stress-free work environment. I mean... What's the big pay for if you're already fully exhausted every day? Your brain is close to exploding and your body is showing signs of giving up. I'm still digitally connected with my previous co-dialysis nurses and every time I see their posts, I won't even dare think or imagine the not so good days I've worked there. Sometimes my conscience kicks in when I'm being grateful for where I am now, thinking of the people I know who are still left there. Well, bottom line is, there's no perfect company nor a perfect dialysis clinic. There will always be advantages and disadvantages, the pros and the cons. My clinic may not be experienced as many staffing problems as in my previous one, but we're just getting less hours. My previous clinic, on the other hand, might be getting the extra hours and the pay I need, but it also comes with more stress and unhealthy work practices. So you decide what's your determining factor. That's it. Hope you learned something from this video. If yes, don't forget to click like, leave a comment for some video suggestion, and of course, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See you next video. <laughs>